do the fish. You know, this is something that everybody should do at least once in their life. Come to one of these remote lakes, it's just full of walleyes, big walleyes, <laughs> like this lake that we're on here today, and just wear yourself out. It's the middle of May up here in northern Manitoba. We're not very far from Snow Lake, Manitoba. Specifically, we're fishing Lake Tramping, and this is just big walleye country. Every year, anglers catch fish well over 30 inches, so if you love big walleyes, this is a top destination in northern Manitoba. So Tramping Lake is my bread and butter for my big fish that I love, and what makes it special is just the genetic strain in that lake is second to none. We have multiple days where we catch multiple fish over 30 inches, and they're true 30 inch fish. And we actually, our lake record in the Manitoba Master Angler Program is 36 inches for this lake. So, you know, they're not rails like a regular Precambrian Shield Lake. Like we, we get 30 inch walleye with 20 inch girth. So that's something that you usually see from Lake Winnipeg, but we've got them in a Precambrian Shield Lake and they're big, golden and beautiful. There he is. They are strong. I'll do my best to hook up a double here. Yeah. Boy, they are just fat. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Beautiful. You know, and granted, you know, fishing jig in a plastic tail like this, it's effective. But you know, the other reason I like to do it, it's fun. It's just a fun way to catch a fish. I mean, you fish them so different many ways, and and a lot of times those bites, man, they just it's just a tick. I mean, they just that line just jumps when they hit it. Just electrical. And the strikes are so cool, especially using braided line. You really feel that tick. That's like that. <laughs> Acting like a big walleye. I'll get the net ready. Oh yeah, look at that. That's just gorgeous. Whoa. That fish was up on the bank a little further. A little shallower. Oh wow. Nice. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Awesome fish. That Jason. is a great walleye. Show this girl off. Beautiful fish. Look at that love how gold they are. My goodness. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. That was cool. That was cool. The witching hour. Big yeah, walleyes of the witching hour. Down and just pretty out here. Mm -hmm. This water's been warming up all day long. Just waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you look out on this water out here, even when we're driving across, I mean, it feels like it's 10 degrees cooler in the air, but you know, there's just this big, deep water out here. And so big thing about this is just trusting your temperature gauge. You know, a lot of times you're finding fish with your temperature gauge in the sense that you go back into some of these protected areas, it might be 10 degrees warmer. Then the other element to that is fishing the wind where this wind is blowing up this warm water up along this bank and, and just look for that warmer water. Where that warmer water stacked up this time of the year, you know, right or, you know, it's basically three days after the opener here in northern Manitoba. That's where you're going to find these fish stacked up. Here we go. Bay, shallow bay, warm bay, muddy bay adjacent to deep water. Textbook early season. Golden walleye like that. And inhaled. Easy, buddy. This plastic.
pretty fascinating. Some of the earliest hunters, you can see moose and different animals. What this is is called the Tramping Lake Pectogryphs, and they are basically native paintings. And there's a bunch of different sayings of how far they're dated back, anywhere from say 2,000 years to 500 years. So they're original paintings from a long time ago, and you know. That lichen takes hundreds of years to grow and they scraped it off in spots just to make those paintings. So it's, uh, it's something special in our little corner. A lot of people come up, just do tours, you know, just to come and see these. So many people get hung up fishing deep for walleye, especially, you know, in conditions like this, they don't realize, especially if you're from the north, because you're, so you're used to fishing them so deep, you don't realize it can actually be in five foot or less or tight to a bank. And I know you guys see it a lot down in the States, but you know, in Precambrian Shield, it's a place that's completely overlooked by majority of fishermen. You know, they even post spawn, they instantly go to 12 foot of water. That's kind of the depth and that uh, so many people just start at, but the shallow water fishing, the fish are obviously here and they're willing to eat. Oh, what do you got? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice little walleye. They're still here, anyhow. Yep. Just imagine this dark bottom on this bay. These fish are just up here sun tanning. It's still early in the year. You can see these trees are just starting to bud out. And water temperature is just starting to creep up into the low 50s. These fish are just up in these bays. Warm water is blowing in here. And, uh, just a matter of falling the wind. The wind's stacking up this warm water along this bank here, just where they want to be right now. You know, a lot of finding walleyes up in this type of country is just trying to find the right profile coming off the shoreline, that right type of bay with the right depth, maybe some current coming through it. But most of all, you're just trying to find warmer water temperatures. And so your temperature gauge is probably the most important element that you have on a depth finder, even though we've got all the side imaging, side scan, we've got fish reveal, all kinds of different things are gonna help you catch fish, but uh, nothing beats a water temperature gauge early in the year. Boy, it's a heavy fish. You got one too? Oh, mine's a walleye. I got a big gator on. <laughs> you got a walleye? Yeah, I got a walleye. He's kicking up a lot of muddier fish. Boy, it's a nice gator. <laughs> Just have a mud line that's developed in here. I better get that out of the way. Boy. Look at this. Don't I can hand bomb him if you want. Yeah, why don't you try to hand Whoa! Not quite yet. <laughs> Not yet, huh? He's not quite done. She looks pretty beat up still from the spawn. Yeah. Oh, nice fish. <laughs> look at that thing. Wow. Boy, look at that. That hook is going to pop right out of there. That's fortunate, eh? Right in the corner of the mouth. Probably a solid 40. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish there. Nice. Didn't lose quite so much. There she goes. That was fun. That was. <laughs> Walleye fishing and catch a 40 inch northern, they're still fun. That's pretty common in this part of the world. Absolutely it is. You never know. Each cast could be a pike or a lake trout, you just never know. You know, up in this country, you know, especially for casting and, and just the versatility, you can't beat just a classic quarter ounce jig. I mean, if you could just pick one lure, quarter ounce jig, and obviously salted shiners or salted minnows are big up here, but uh, you know, a lot of times the soft plastics catch fish just as well, and they're a lot more durable, so that makes you more efficient over the course of the day. What I always tell clients that come up to the lodge, just make sure you cover all the water, you know, those fish aren't all gonna be in one spot per se. They're gonna be fish coming in and fish going out. You wanna put as many odds in your favor so no matter where you're putting your hook, you have more chance of putting it in front of a fish that it's gonna take. Yeah. You know, you can go through here and just pound one specific depth, one part of the spot, but when you fan cast, especially on both sides of the boat, you're basically covering everything from two to three feet of water out to eight, nine feet of water off the other side of the boat. 
and you just you just double the amount of coverage that you have when you go through a spot. There you go. That looks like a good fish, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, those big walleyes, they just zigzag down there. Just shake their head. Well, you let me know if you need the net. Well, we're in Canada, remember? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you get a 34-incher, I'm getting the net, OK? <laughs> Fair enough. Just a fun way to catch a walleye right there. That's a gorgeous fish. And you know what's special when you catch a 24 inch walleye like that, and that's a smaller one compared to some of the fish that we've seen today. Yeah, this gorgeous. Thanks for the fight. There's a fish. Got him. Yeah. All right. That fish was out a little ways, wasn't it? Yeah. Nice walleye, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He's definitely got some shoulders to him. You know, this is something that everybody should do at least once in their life. Come to one of these remote lakes that's just full of walleyes, big walleyes, <laughs> like this lake that we're on here today, and just wear yourself out. Look at that fish. That is a solid fish, Jason. I didn't quite realize it was as big as this fish is. What a beautiful place, two islands and trees and eagles. <laughs> and get wet. But I'll get wet for fish like that every day of the week. I think most people would. 